Why are political debates turning into a battleground already? Easy. Everything's in play. With Kamala Harris versus Trump, it's going to be no stone left unturned and no stone left unthrown. Take, for instance, this whole idea that Kamala Harris is a DEI hire. That's right. That's what they're going for now. In fact, I heard a conversation over on Breaking Points with Crystal Ball and Sagar and Jetty, where they brought up this topic and they were debating it. Now, full disclosure, I used to go on Breaking Points back in the day. So I have no beef with either one of these folks, but we will unpack this and we will pull no punches. Calling her a DAI candidate is empirically true. She was picked for her race. She was picked because she was a black woman. If you look back at the time, Amy Klobuchar, Gretchen Whitmer, and her were on the final list. BLM madness was happening. Jim Clyburn says, you got to pick a black lady. And he picked a black lady, even though he didn't like her. And she wasn't all that politically effective and so, failed in the primary. That is literally here's, DEI. Here's what I would say. Yeah. The vice presidential pick is almost by definition a DEI pick. Joe Biden was put on the ticket with Barack Obama because he's a white dude. Like, okay. you're, you're always picked. I mean, what are we talking about with regard to um, who Kamala will pick? Mm -hmm. Well, like, it's going to be a white guy. Yes. Is that a DEI Yes, pick? that's my but, point. But is, here's the thing, When you Sager, get picked for your race, here's, that is Sager, DEI. here's the thing. Yeah. That did, none of these people, and you, by the way, too, you would never talk about them that way. You would never use the term DEI to describe them, even though they're also being picked for their race or other demographic characters. Mike Pence picked because he's an evangelical with you know ties into that community. No one called him a DEI pick. And that goes to my point of what this has come to mean, whatever you might mean when mm -hmm. you say it, what it has come to mean is a black person with a job. Okay. And remember how they used it with the Baltimore mayor? Right. Sure. The so democratically just one elected idiot mayor says it on Twitter. No, said, but that doesn't is, define everything. Yeah, but you know that this is okay. not just one idiot on Twitter. I mean, that's how they're using it in this context too, and it's not used consistently. Joe Biden was a DEI vice presidential pick. Mike Pence was a DEI presidential pick, a vice presidential pick. JD Vance was picked because of his, you know, unique ties in the Rust Belt. Or was he a DEI vice presidential pick? No, of course they would never talk about them that way because it's only used to talk about black people. But. Let me just say, again, I encourage you to continue this line of attack. I encourage you to continue in this direction because not only is it off-putting for a, a demographic group that, you know, was starting to be like somewhat open to Republicans, and I don't think just black people, like also you have a lot, as you were saying before, you have mm -hmm. a lot of like suburban white people who don't want to see themselves as racist. If they're going to vote against Kamala Harris, they want like a non-racial based or gender sure. based reason to vote against her. Affirmative action was literally created for black people. There's a reason why the term is inextricably linked. Now, part of the problem with affirmative action, but that's which what, So that's graduated. what makes it an explicitly racial But But this term. is what I'm saying. The problem with affirmative action is that it became DEI, which became an all encompassing term that got fused with BIPOC, ESG, all of this like minority obsession. So whites are by definition not a minority, which is why the term is not traditionally used with that. Now, as a mindset itself, uh, by the way, I oppose racial preferences. I oppose, oppose voting for people because of race, and I don't believe in racial exceptionalism or any of this stuff. And I would have opposed it back in the 1960s too. The policy has been a disaster for the United States, which is why I think striking down affirmative action was a good thing. Now, calling her a DEI candidate, again, is empirically true when you utilize your race in the midst of the greatest racial hysteria. In the is Saga DEI higher for breaking points? It was just funny that he was putting up this argument. <laughs> he was putting up an argument with Crystal Ball, and like no one knew Saga. At least I'd never heard of the guy, right? You know, Crystal Ball had been on MSNBC and several other places she'd been, you know. She the one landed interviews with like Bernie during the election and stuff, you know, the only person he sat down with besides TYT is Crystal Ball. And during this debate back and forth, I'm sitting there watching this guy going, huh, oh, this guy doesn't realize he's DI guy. Like, you're a DI in the Republican Party, man. Who do you think you are? If just being brown, because he's Indian, 
is enough to make you DEI because I'm sure there was a qualified white guy that could be a host of a internet-based news show that the white lady could have chose, right? That would make you DEI, right? There are always more than the hundreds of people who can be qualified for any given position, whatever your qualification is. All you have to be able to do is talk and know the issues to be a sidekick co-host, right? So there was a lot of white guys that Crystal could have chose, but I don't know, she could have chose Ryan Grimm, Glenn Greenwald. I don't know. I don't know. So many white guys, you can just throw a rock and hit a white guy. Right? It's like, <laughs> so like Kamala, so back to Kamala. Look, guys, Kamala Harris, uh, is she a DI hire? Which I agree with Crystal is basically a shorthand for black. That's what it means. DI hire, hire. I don't know, man. Like, it don't take much to be VP. Al Gore. You know, come on, man. You know, vice presidents do not set the world on fire. The, the bar for vice presidents, because by definition, vice presidents have to bring something different to the table than the president. So it's always trying to compliment it and get another facet of voter or type of voter or whatever. That's the whole purpose of having a vice president. Is that DEI because she's black? If she was white, would she be a DEI? You would say it still because she's a woman. If it was a white woman, you'd say that the only, the only person never considered to be an affirmative action hire is a white guy. And that, my friends, is why black people make up, black men make up 2% of black, of male lawyers and 2% of male doctors and 2% of the tech managerial side of the tech industry and 2% of the SBA loans and less than 2%, hell, less than 1% a venture capital fund investments from venture capitalists. Yeah, man. Shark Tank is a lie. But Saga doesn't call that discrimination. Neither do neither does this guy, Represent, Representative Burchett out of Tennessee, I think it was. He would never call that racism. He's going to hire a, a black female for vice president, and that not he just skipped over. What about what about white females? What about any other group? It just when you go down that route, you you um, you take mediocrity, and that's what they have right now as a vice president. Are you, are you suggesting she's she was a DEI hire? One hundred percent, she was a DEI hire. He call it normal because that's the way it should be. It should be. 90% white men. And if anybody else, anyone else says, hey, hey, let's get something different. Oh, you're only doing that because they're different. Maybe they only pick white guys because they're all the same. To not be different. But see, that's what they want. They benefit from that. And even Saga plays into that, which is sad. Because he's not even white. Look at Brother Biden. You and I know if he was a black brother, he would be a retired used car salesman still in Scranton, Pennsylvania, man. He's the epitome of white male mediocrity yeah. that went to the top. There it is. So that's affirmative, affirmative action. When it was white, to use Brother Ira Kelton Nelson, Jewish exactly. brother wrote the book, still telling the truth, when affirmative action was white, you had white male mediocrity at the top. You still do. I saw it at Harvard. I saw it at Princeton. I saw it at Yale. I mean, not all of them, but you got a whole lot of them. nepotism and all kind of stuff. 
Now people are talking about Biden got poetry in his in his veins, and people talking <laughs> about how great he is and an excellent president and right. the most transformative. Ever. Get off the crack pipe. He couldn't even pass the John Lewis voting rights bill for black people, and black people and black women had pushed him over the finish line. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to tell anybody out there to go get this book. It is a very informative book that tells you a lot about America and it clears up many things regarding how some people got where they are. And some of it wasn't so much on merit as it was a little help from the U.S. government. And some people did not get that help from the U.S. government. So please check that out. Ira Katz Nelson, when affirmative action was white. Now it's DEI. But once upon a time, it was helping families. The only problem was they didn't consider black people as people. 